Hi, my name is Jeremy Mill and welcome to my channel. This video is sponsored by nobody. No one sponsored my videos. Uh, not even Luminar, which is this this video is all about. Um, anyway, let's crack on. This is not a day for going outside for two reasons. It is chucking it down, it's not very nice, and we're not allowed to. Lockdown. It's at the computer having a look at Luminar 4 to see if this is a uh, program a tool that I'll be using in the future and if it's something you guys might want to look at using um, for sprucing up some old photos, making a, a sky come to life where otherwise you were at a scene and the sky was flat. All those kind of capabilities is an offer in Luminar 4 so let's see what it's like. Plug and play, it's ready to rock and roll, you don't have to do anything to it, it looks very similar to Lightroom how it's set up, uh, slider wise, even the kind of terminology is kind of similar as well. So I'll be going in cold, you'll be coming along with the journey with me and see what we can do. I've identified a couple of photos that we're going to edit. Most of them are kind of based on sky replacement because fundamentally that's the, that is the thing that it does. It also does portrait stuff apparently. Uh, as I said, I've not utilized it at all, not used the program. Um, and I've got another shot there, which is just a kind of a, a busy woodland uh, shot with a stream going through it, so I'm going to edit that completely. So come along with me, I'm going to open it up now and see how we get on. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is, we're going to open up Lightroom. As I said, I've identified uh, five shots there. Um, fundamentally because, I mean, there's quite a lot of nice sky here, but um, the other ones, yeah, I mean, we could make use of the sky uh, in these already, but uh, just for the purpose of this, Luminar 4 experiment and uh, we might as well just try and replace these if it allows it to do so. So I've not done any editing to these, these are, are pretty much straight out of the camera. I have removed some debris in this one because there's twigs and things here. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll go ahead, we'll open this one up and we'll see what Luminar 4 has to offer. So here we go, that's all my kind of plugins that I use. So anyway, Luminar 4, let's open this and we're just going to edit with a, a copy of Lightroom adjustments. As I said, I've removed debris and stuff down here very roughly, I mean, I need to do more, but. So let's open that up. Okay, so this is the UI for Luminar 4. It's, as I've said before, it is very kind of similar, the, the layout, you know, you've got the thumbnails along the bottom, albeit these are thumbnails of what quick enhancements you can achieve that are already built in. You know, we've got the sky enhancer, it's soft and airy, contrast enhancer, so, so a couple of a couple of ones to go for straight away here. And this is, you know, your kind of bog standards, your exposures, smart contrast, highlight shadows, uh, AI enhance, AI structure, color, black and white, details, all that good stuff. This is where the uh, sky replacement tabs are. I mean, judging by this one, you can actually, you know, produce quite a nice sky in it already because it is it is already there for the purpose of the video. Let's have a look at sky replacement. So we've got blue skies. Um, let's have a wee look to see what they have. Yeah, so it's it's quite vivid. <laughs> it's quite quite extreme. There's lots of advanced settings here. You can uh, defocus the sky, all that kind of things. I have noticed it is found. Might be a bit of an overlap there, but it, it does recolor the scene as well. Relight scene, so you can you, know, you can do a lot more here. You can darken it. You can also sky global. To hear what that does. No difference there. Sky temperature. So that's quite blue, and that is warming it up a wee bit. And exposure, you can brighten things up a wee bit. Take it. We're obviously darkening things down. So let's have a look, not too keen on blue sky. I'm just gonna work through them all and see what we think. Yeah, it's okay, it's it's a bit too much. Um, that's a bit better. It doesn't make an awful lot of sense where the clouds are falling off here though. 
Um, it's about too, you know, bang on the horizon, so that's not ideal. We'll go for some kind of dramatics. Let's see what the dramatics guy. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, you've got quite a lot of sunset work here. You can do things um, for another dramatic. So that could be quite interesting. Again, not quite the right colour though, is it? It's, uh, kind of going back to this one, which is awful blue. That's the problem. It's awful blue. So if we can have a wee bit of play about here. Yeah, so if you bring up the exposure quite a bit, it's actually looking a bit better. But it's, it, it's, it's, it screams that it's very, very kind of false, if you ask me. That's, I think maybe what it is, because there's such a kind of hard, obvious blue horizon, because it's a sea here, it might have something to do with... Mm -hmm. yeah, that's looking a little bit better. So clouds themselves look a bit straight. Let's see what we can do here. Well, you can really dark. That is already so it saves the exposure and temperature and things from the previous edit. So let's re-light the scene so it looks a wee bit. I don't know. Let's see what the sunsets have to offer. We've got a chopper in this one. Looks interesting. Um, yeah, I'm kind of going back to that one a wee bit more. These are just, just all the kind of wrong colour for the, the, the scene. Um, yeah. That's a wee bit more like the colour, I guess. So yeah, that's a little bit better, but you know, compared to the actual scene that was there, it's quite a lot more pinky, isn't it? That softens up a bit, a wee bit better. Yeah, so there we go. Something, I mean, as I said, it was the sky was actually looking not too shabby beforehand. It's fine, it's a usable image once I cleaned all this up, it's not too bad at all. But yeah, it's, it's something different. So, click apply here, and that should just render in those edits back into Lightroom. And there we go, that's it back to that. So, it's made a duplicate copy, so that was original. So, that's interesting, it just makes a, a copy of that, that's fine. So this is another one, it's just also taken down in Portobello like this one. So again, edit in, go into Luminar 4, edit, I can edit original copy because I've not done anything to this one. And there we go. So let's see what the, the options are here. Yeah, there's, as you can see, there's very little information in the sky, there's just some kind of overcast clouds. So let's go back into Creative, Sky Replacement, and let's have a wee play about with this one. What was the last one we used? It's a dramatic sky, was it? That was the same. Well, it was not. It was a different one. It was a blue sky before, wasn't it? But that actually looks. That looks not too bad. That is a lot more interesting than that. Let's see what we can do regarding relighting the scene. So that darkens down. Let's bring things up a bit. We've got sun rays. We've already got sun rays here. Let's see what place sun. Ah. Some. See the sun's there, and see what happens here. Oh, well, there you go. And each of these settings, you can go in further, and you can really. Add, so that's the number of sun rays. That's how we play about with that. Okay. Sun glow, sun warmth. So that's just added a bit more to the scene. And I think what I'd probably do once this is rendered in, I'd go back to Lightroom and then I'd, you know, brighten up all this to sync up with the sun rays as well. So yeah, that's a, that is better. Let's have a wee uh, play about with this again. So that's, yeah, it is, it is more exciting. Um, I dare say you can do a lot more with this defocus atmospheric haze. It kind of softens up a wee bit sky temperature. Yeah, it's a wee bit more in keeping with the, the actual image itself. Nice one. Okay, that's cool. I'll apply that and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so here's a darker image. We've got a crow here. This is up Ben Ann a few years ago. So let's again go through the motion. It does take a wee while to load up once I've pressed the edit button, but um, that might just be because I'm recording the screen as well. It kind of slows things down a wee bit. So this is quite dark and dramatic, so let's have a wee look at the options we have here. Well, we've got dramatic, let's have a look. 
Again, we've not quite got the same kind of colour. I guess I, we can go in and edit that later. But it's you know, very turquoise. And that's, is that the same one we used? It was, wasn't it? I quite like this. I'm not too keen on that. This section is really quite well done. Let's see what else we have to offer. Chromatic 3. Yeah, that's the same one as before and I'm still, I'm liking that. That is, that is nice. That is good. Let's relight the scene, see what happens here. So that darkens the scene right down, that relights it. Uh, advanced settings. It's atmosphere, sky temperature, make it a wee bit colder. This is all pretty much in focus. You can see the snow and things. So there's no need to defocus the sky. It goes a wee bit, a bit odd when you do that. It, it, it focuses the whole thing rather than you know, a drop off front to back, which would have been nice. But no, that's fine. So let's just edit this scene. Let's see what this does. Advanced settings. Okay, so that brings up the curve adjuster. So let's bump up the shadows a bit. This is just affecting the scene. It's not affecting this. Yeah, it's not affecting the sky. Smart contrast. So that's, we've got, see, we've got the vibrance here. That's very similar to Lightroom as well. It works the same way, you know. Saturation is usually a bit overkill. And what I tend to do, if this is the same as Lightroom, I tend to pull the saturation back slightly and bump up the vibrance. It seems like a nicer way of working with the colours. That seems to be affecting the, the sky as well. That's interesting. So some of the, these adjustments just affect the portion of the image that's yours and some of them affect universal, the whole, the whole image. But we're starting to look a wee bit better here. This is a bit more in keeping colour-wise. Um, I need to get a bit of a... Let's see what other things. Details, denoise, landscape enhancer. Dehaze. Oops. Again, very similar to um, what is on offer in Lightroom. Which, these things are good because you're, um, you're all automatically familiar with what these sliders do. You're, they're not renaming things. Again, we've got the foliage enhancement there. Vignette, let's see what the... Pull it back for dark and oh, that's quite a nice softer vignette as well. That's good. Adjusting the size and you can edit the mask. Okay, so say I don't want to have vignette up here. Let's have a real look here. Mask, apply, paint, erase. So, yeah. Okay, well that's pretty good. So let's have a, I'm assuming this is the, yeah, the before and after. So that's where we came in and this is where we're leaving. So cool down the image quite, quite a lot. Uh, brought out some of the details without really going into detail enhancer, which is pretty nice. And obviously the sky has a lot more impact. So that's pretty exciting, that's good. So let's just apply that. Not the most exciting of images, I admit these are just random ones I've pulled out from, from past photos where I thought the sky could have been doing a lot more than what it was doing. And there we go. Okay, so that's where we were and that's where we've come to. So that's, it's worked here, I'm happy with this. Not too sure, not too sure. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's go into the lighthouse shot. Uh, again, let's do the usual, edit in, luminar four. Here we are. So this is a very flat scene. Uh, I have already edited this one a wee while ago and I actually did quite an extensive edit. I took all this distraction, I took all that away. So it really is just the wall lighthouse. So that was the kind of focal point. So in my mind, my thought process was that actually you don't need an awful lot of information here because it would be contrasting with the just the straight parallel lines going down, leading you into the, the lighthouse here. That's why I took all this stuff away because it's quite unsightly and it's a distraction. But this is, as I said, just a kind of basic raw version. No edits done whatsoever. As you can see, there's you know, dust spots. So let's again go straight into, well, yeah, the AI enhancer doesn't do an awful lot. It brings out the yellows here in the lighthouse itself. It makes everything a lot more blue, kind of turquoise the sea a bit. Um, so let's just go back into sky. Uh, what do you think? Blue sky, it's blue, already quite a blue scene. Mm, no, no, not too dissimilar those two, just slightly different clouds again, it's the same. Hmm, that's, that's not too bad. I can see that working. There you go, that's increased this, the similarities between colour of the water and the sky. A bit of haze, there's a bit of haze there. It makes it a bit more greeny, a bit more blue, but it actually affects quite a bit. The sky temperature affects the actual shot itself, so it brings those whites right up. So if you can see the kind of the wall, it's quite a greeny white. And then when you bring the temperature, it actually affects the whole scene. So that's looking a, quite a bit better. 
And bring the exposure so that is affecting the whole scene as well. That's making it pop a lot more better. Um, let's have a wee play about with this. Let's add Aurora, <laughs> Aurora Borealis if you want. Clouds, already got clouds. Okay, place object, ah, okay. Playing about with these things. Hmm, let's, let's not do that one. It's a wee bit, a bit better. You're confusing the eye here, aren't we? Let's go for birds. Okay, that's a wee bit, it's not doing a very good job here. Advanced setting, uh, realigning mount birds place. Birds two, let's see what this, all right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, ah, these are more like it. They're kind of seagulls. That should really be there next to the water. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, no, that's okay. Let's just leave that as that. Uh, I would say dramatic. Let's see what these things do. Okay, so that's just crunches it horribly. Mystical color LUTs. Um, choose LUT. Here we go, it's getting a wee bit better. Let's see what else we can do. If we actually go into AI Enhance, let's see what this does. Makes it quite blue. Um, so again, bring up the pull back of saturation, just makes it a wee bit more realistic. Remove color cast, let's see if we can get rid of this blue. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit better, that is better. From there to there, yep, yep, that's, that's good. Advanced settings, or oh, you can actually go in colors. Can you actually pick a color? No. Saturation, bring up the yellow, luminous. Fortunately, it's affecting this. That's the problem. And brush in, let's just brush in here. There we go. So, yep, yeah, there's quite a lot of things you can do. It's actually pretty good. It's not as subtle as the likes of Lightroom on, obviously, the, the capabilities aren't close to what you can get in Photoshop, but it is quicker. And, you know, if you're just wanting, to, if you know the subject, if you know the actual images, it has possibilities and you want to make a quick edit, you know, to just to, you know, stick it up on Instagram or something, this is probably the way to do it rather than getting too bogged down. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's, that's looking okay. Uh, what else do we have here? You can make it a little bit more sunny. I mean, can pull them highlights back to compensate for that. So, yeah, before, after, before, after. Certainly improved from what came in with. I would clean up all this stuff as well. Uh, crushing the blacks here, but I'm fine. Don't mind crushing certain blacks because it is actually black. I'm fine with that. Yep, okay, nice one. Right, that was a wee bit of fun, throwing some birds into the scene there. Okay, that's us back into Lightroom now. So the last one, this has no sky in it intentionally. I decided not to choose any sky so I could focus on the actual editing capabilities of Luminar 4. So open this up. It's not a very nice image. It's too messy. It's too, yeah, it's, there's an awful lot going on in it. So I'm not that fussed about this image at all. But let's see what we can do here. If we can maybe pull down some of the crunchiness. Um, I would say it's probably overexposed. Um, but we can soften things up and maybe draw our attention to the, the waterfall here. So I'm not going to bother with going into the, the, the sky enhancement or any of these things. I'm just going to go straight into editing the light. So exposure wise, let's pull that back a wee bit and um, darken the shadows down. And smart contrast, let's soften this up a wee bit. That's better. What happens when you do the other way? Crunchy, crunchy, not very nice. Boost the highlights just to get a bit of nice whiteness of the, the waterfall here. Advanced settings, let's see what we can go here. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Landscape enhancer, foliage gold now, advanced settings. Dehaze, so that's something similar to what we've used in the past. Not an awful lot of haze going on here, so. I did see a fog, how did I see the fog? It was actually fog, yeah, here we go. Let's bring a bit of fog in here. Edit mask, brush in. So if we add a bit of fog in the back here, I wonder if we can edit it post, yeah we can. So let's just do a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of that, and then we go into a raise. And drop that down a wee bit. Softness, opacity. So this is all very similar, so that's good. 
and pull that back a wee bit here. Bit of that there. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's pull it back a wee bit. Nice one. Glow. Advanced settings of smoothness, warmth, mystical. Let's have a wee look at this. It's quite a mystical scene now, isn't it, with the fog rolling through the back. Yeah, it's just a just a little a bit, a bit better there. Um, that was the other thing I was going to have a look at. That's right, the Orton effect. This is, as it suggests there, this is for portrait, but we can introduce some of this here, which is quite a common thing to do with um, shots of woodscape, wood, woodlands and things. So back here, it's now too bright. So let's pull back. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's a lot of debris here. You can... Yes, I actually do. Let's have we play with this lasso tool. See what we can do with this. Now what? What happens now? Okay. Yeah, it's a bit odd there. You wouldn't know, I guess. Um, Lens geometry, so it's back to this. It's uh, crop. Let's have a wee crop because there's too much information down here. Now it's locked. Let's see what we have here, all the different. Okay, we've locked it, that's fine, happy with that. And let's go, let's go there. Okay, I think it's just, it's knowing where to find things. You have a, a, obviously you have a bit of a workflow when you're using um, the lights of Lightroom and things like that. And you know where to find things, whereas this is, a wee bit trickier because you're you're kind of ping-ponging back and forth not too sure of where to find things but it's a good experience anyway let's have a look before and after so that was coming in very crunchy too so much information not knowing where to go and this is after so it's a bit ott in my book it's a bit too soft and you know, uh, fog, yeah, it's just a kind of desaturated look that happens here. It would have been nice to maybe pull back some of the dark on this because you can see the blacks have, I, I do like blacks in an image. If there's black, it's, got, it's supposed to be black, whereas down here you've got the blacks, up here it's not. It would have been nice just to have a bit of that control, uh, whereas the fog really is just, you know, it's just kind of washed out a lot of the darks. But yeah, pretty cool. I think I would have been probably happier doing things in the likes of Lightroom and Photoshop maybe and that side of things. Certainly with the removal of all these twigs and stuff I wasn't too sure about the arrays part of things um, here. But anyway it's a start, it's something to you know to, to think about, that's the capabilities just to give you guys a bit of an overview of how the program works regarding its artificial intelligence uh, AI side of things. Quite a cool wee tool uh, for, for quick edits, certainly for the sky. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just another way of looking at things, I guess. Another, another tool to utilize, and it's, it's not too laggy either. It's pretty quick at doing all these kind of things, which is great. But, uh, but some nice wee changes. That's an improvement, definitely, from that to that. And we've got that to that. So it just softens things up a wee bit. It's a very busy scene. It's going to be hard to, to make most of that one. But yeah, some nice wee changes here. Um, that whole scene it needs to be relit and edited to make the most of the, what's happening in the sky there. And that to that, a bit overkill. I think it's just a bit solid with the line. Obviously the line before is there anyway, but it just kind of blends in a bit better. Whereas that, I don't know. I'm not too sure about that one. So that was a good wee experiment, um, just to see how Luminar 4 copes. Actually quite surprisingly well. Um, really quite chuffed with how it, it, it figures out the mask of um, the actual foreground and it does it does know where the sky should be, which is it could save a lot of time if you're into sky replacing at frequent times. I believe you can load up your own skies as well, so the, the kind of that kind of fight of using other images could be uh, could be softened a wee bit if you if you load Luminar up with your own your own skies you know exactly you know it's your image a lot of people do that already it's quite a common way of, uh, of, of 
of, of enhancing an image if the sky is not doing what you want it to do. But yeah, of, all in all, it's quite a good software. It'll, as a lot of these new things, it takes a wee bit of getting used to just finding out where everything is. But f fortunately, the, the terminology and the sliders are all kind of similar to what Lightroom have to offer. They act in a very, quite a different way and where they are. But again, as I said, that's just a workflow, just what you're used to. Um, so yeah, quite a good thing to have. Um, if you guys have used it in the past or are planning on using it, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you have any more questions, if you want me to look at some other things, maybe have a look at the portrait side of things, play about with that in uh, a later video, put that request again in the comments below and I'll have a wee read through and see what you guys are wanting to see. But overall, it's a good tool, quite happy with it. I will be using it in the future, but as I th think I will load up my own skies more than use, like, use, using theirs. Uh, I could probably name them better as well, so I know exactly st what works with what, rather than having to go through, you know, sky by sky before you find something that actually suits the image. Um, but pretty handy bit of software, actually, pretty handy. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, uh, give us a few thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe, be much appreciated. And I shall catch you in the next video. Take care, see ya.